Hi, my name is Sher and I'm a math and science tutor. I've been an SAT tutor for about 3 years now and with SAT math problems, a lot of them have a shortcut method to solving them. Today, I'll be going through identifying and solving these sorts of shortcut problems. If you enjoy watching these sorts of videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you get notified when I release more videos. Let's get on to it. Let's take a look at the first type of problem. One common type of shortcut problem is solving for expressions. Here, the question is asking for you to solve for an expression x plus 4. If you look carefully, x plus 4 is actually a factor of 2x plus 8. So if you factor out a 2 right here, you should get 2 times x plus 4 equals to 16. The regular way would be to subtract 8 on both sides to get 2x equals to 8, divide by 2, x equals to 4, and plug that in directly to get 4 plus 4 which equals to 8. But if you look, this takes at least 3 steps overall. Whereas if you do it the shortcut way, where you know it's 2 times x plus 4 equals to 16, you can just divide both sides by 2 instead and just get x plus 4 equals to 8 directly. The giveaway here is that the expression the question is asking for is also present in the original problem. It's just much more efficient to directly solve for x plus 4. Let's take a look at another type of expression problem. In this problem, the expression 2n minus 1 is not present in the original problem. However, part of the expression 2n is here. So this means that instead of solving for n, we can just solve for 2n and plug that directly in. So if you multiply both sides by 5, you should get 2n equals to 50. And hence 2n minus 1 would just be 50 minus 1, which would give you 49. This is much faster than solving for n and plugging it back in, because if you tried to solve for n, you still have to divide by 2 on both sides to get n equals to 25. And when you plug it back into 2n minus 1, you're still going to do 2 times 25 anyway to get 50 again. It's just much more efficient to just look for 2n and plug that in. The giveaway here is that the original problem and the expression are both asking for 2n in common. Let's look at a third problem. Although it might seem that our problem 3r and 6r plus 3 do not look similar, 3r is actually a factor of 6r. Instead of solving for just r, so the long method would be 3r equals to 18, divide by 3, divide by 3 to get r equals to 6, and plugging that in, which would just give us r times 6 times 6 plus 3 to give us 36 plus 3, which is 39. The faster way would just be to multiply both sides by 2 to solve for 6r, which will give you 36 anyway, and plug that directly into 6r plus 3, which is just 36 plus 3, which gives you 39. It's similar, but the, the normal way uses a lot more steps compared to the faster way. The giveaway here is identifying that both the problem, 3r, and 6r are related to each other. Moving on to the next type of problem. The next type of shortcut problems are solving for expressions given a system of equations. Here is an example. So the question is asking for 5x plus 5y. The regular method would be to solve for x and y separately and then plug it in, but that wouldn't be the most efficient. So let me show you the regular method first so you can see how long it is. So 2x plus 3y equals to 1200, 3x plus 2y equals to 1300, we'll make the axes the same, multiply the top one by 3 to get 6x plus 9y equals to 3600, multiply the bottom one by 2 to get 6x plus 4y equals to 2600, and then subtract the two equations. 6x minus 6x will leave you no axes, 9y minus 4y leaves you 5y, 
3600 minus 2600 leaves you 1000. To just get y, divide both sides by 5, y equals to 200. To solve for x, plug y as 200 into your original problem. 2x plus 3 times 200 equals to 1200. Distribute the parentheses, 2x plus 600 equals to 1200. Subtract 600 on both sides. That would be 2x equals to 600 and then divide by 2 on both sides to get x equals to 300. Now solving for 5x plus 5y, that would leave us 5 times 300 plus 5 times 200, which would give us 1500 plus 1000, which just gives us 2500. This is the regular method and this is actually very long compared to the shortcut method. Now, notice that the question is asking for 5x plus 5y. If you add up the x's, 2x and 3x would add up to 5x. And add up the y's, 3y plus 2y actually equals to 5y. You'll notice that by adding the equations together, we will get 5x plus 5y. So all that's left to do is to add up the 1200 and the 1300 to get 2500. This is just a one-step process compared to the normal way, which is multiple steps long. The better way would just be to add both of them up. Let's take a look at another systems of equation problem. Here, the question is asking for 2w plus 3t. Now, if you try adding or subtracting them, uh, you wouldn't really get anywhere. So if you subtract them, you should get 4w minus 2w, that gives you 2w. 5t minus 4t will give you 1t, and then 25 minus 14 gives you 11. If you add them up, 4w plus 2w is actually 6w. 5t plus 4t is 9t, and 25 plus 14 is 39. Now, I know neither one of these is 2w plus 3t. See, 2w plus t and 6w plus 9t. But if you pay attention, you'll notice that 2w plus 3t is actually a factor of 6w plus 9t. So if we factorize out a 3 here, we should get 2w plus 3t here equals to 39. To get 2w plus 3t, just divide both sides by 3. You get 2w plus 3t equals to 13. Again, this method, it's just one, two, three steps long compared to the regular elimination method of systems of equation, which is multiple steps long. The giveaway here for these sorts of problems is that the question will always ask for the value of an expression like this, and we will usually have to just add or subtract the systems of equation provided. Let's move on to quadratics. One of the most common quadratic problems are solving for zeros. So for example, you would have some ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Typically, you have to use factorization to solve for x to get your answer. The type of problems I'm about to show you do not typically use x squared and x. They may use another expression. Let's look at this for example. Here, the question is asking for values of x where the function is undefined. So when they say undefined, they are just talking about when the denominator equals to zero because in math, you cannot have, you cannot divide by zero, you cannot have a denominator by zero. So undefined functions typically denominator is zero. Let's just write our denominator first and equate that to zero so we know exactly what equation we're going to be dealing with. You can see that this is just a trinomial, so see, one term, two terms, three terms. But instead of x, it's using x minus 5 instead. We could use foil and distribute the parentheses, but the easier method would be to use substitution. So you can let some random letter, like for example u, equals to x minus 5. Now, we'll just replace all our x minus 5 with u's instead. u squared plus 4u plus 4 equals to 0. This equation is much more simpler to solve. We can just solve for u and then plug it back in here to solve for x. So for example, we would have to find the factors of 4. So typically our c here, this is our c, it's 4. We need to find factors of c that add up to b. So 4 is either 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. Uh, 1 and 4 do not add up to 4, but 2 and 2 do add up to 4. So we're talking about 2 and 2 here, u and u here. 
and it has to be positive 2 and positive 2 because positive 2 and positive 2 will add up to positive 4. So in this case, we've got u plus 2 equals to 0, subtract 2 on both sides and we'll get u equals to negative 2. Remember, the question is asking for x, not u, so you have to plug back in your negative 2 into this equation. Negative 2 equals to x minus 5 at 5 at 5 and we would get x equals to 3. This is the much faster solution instead of having to follow it and then solve for x anyway. Let's look at another problem involving substitution here. So let's distribute the parentheses first, x to the fifth minus 5x cubed equals to negative 4x. Shift the negative 4x, x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 4x. And our equation would look like this. Although this may not look like a quadratic problem, the giveaway here is that it has three terms, one term, two terms, three terms, it's a trinomial, and we're going to have to be using quadratic factorization to solve this. So let's start by factoring out their GCF. If we factor out the GCF, we'll have x, x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 equals to 0. Although you could technically solve this and say x equals to 0 just by this factor, the question did say x has to be greater than 0, so we actually cannot use this answer. Now our problem looks like this instead. Again, this is x to the 4th and x to the 2nd, not x squared and x, so instead we're going to have to use substitution here again to make it look more like a quadratic equation, you can just use u equals to x squared. Now instead, we'll have u squared minus 5u plus 4, which equals to 0. This is much simpler to solve. It looks much more like a quadratic equation. And we can just factorize this directly. So u, u. We have to find factors of 4 that add up to 5. So 4 is either 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. 2 and 2 do not add up to 5, but 1 and 4 does. And it has to be negative 1 and negative 4 because negative 1 and negative 4 would give us negative 5. You'll end up with u minus 1 equals to 0, u minus 4 equals to 0. Solve for u by adding 1 to both sides, u equals to 1. Solve for u again for this one, u equals to 4. All you have to do now is plug in u as 1 and u as 4 into this original problem. We've got 1 equals to x squared, 4 equals to x squared. If we square root both sides, we'll get plus minus 1 for x or plus minus 2 for x. So as long as you put either positive 1 or positive 2, the answer here would be, would be accepted. The giveaway for substitution problems with quadratic equations is whenever the question asks for zeros of a trinomial, so you can see you have three terms and they ask for the zero, but the terms, instead of having x squared and x, they use something else other than x squared. That's when you'll have to use substitution. And those are some common tips and tricks on identifying shortcut problems in the SAT. If you enjoyed watching the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you get notified when my next part comes out. Thank you for watching and happy holidays!